Welcome back. There was another set of recommendations coming out of the killing spree of Miles Sanderson in 2022. Dozens of recommendations have now been made, but will they prevent similar tragedies from happening in the future? Our Truth in Politics panel is here to discuss. Negan Sinclair is a columnist with the Winnipeg Free Press. And Jennifer Lewitz is a policy analyst with Warshield. Jennifer Negan, great to have you with us this week. Uh, Negan, we'll start with you. Dozens of recommendations have been made in recent weeks. Uh, any of them stand out for you? Probably the biggest recommendation is that there's so many recommendations that have come out over various months, mm -hmm. uh, which tells you that there's a real chronic problem within the correctional system to support uh, particularly Indigenous offenders, but those offenders who have been traumatized over a long period of time. I mean, we are talking about someone who was con convicted 46 times over about a decade, and that led to the situation, uh, the tragedy on James Smith Cree Nation. Um, with all of those recommendations, and I think probably the ones that relate to parole are probably the most significant ones. There's also an area involving trying to um, come up with a different way of defining offenders uh, when they are in prison, making sure that they're supported in very specific ways. Because when we're talking about an Indigenous offender, we're talking about chronic offenses or abuses that they've they've experienced but then also the fact that the system is really hell-bent to make sure that they are not supported in the ways in which our peoples uh, rehabilitate and rebuild people's identity uh, and that involves language culture alongside the supports that are necessary for mental health and to make sure that trauma is dealt with appropriately so what i would say is there's there's many different recommendations within that report but i would say specifically probably the thing most markedly is that Chief Robert Head of the Peter Chabot Ben and James Smith Cree Nation came out this week and said, you know, every recommendation that comes out is really useless if we are not included in the uh, discussions that Correctional Services or Canada ha are having or that the justice system is having. So you have to include the community. You have to include the leadership within that community and particularly the medicine people, the knowledge keepers, the elders, uh, or else all of these recommendations are really just kind of uh, lip service as Chief Head said. Well, Jennifer, the, the James Smith Cree Nation is patrolling the community themselves. They have vehicles. They have uh, community members out there keeping an eye on things uh, without government funding. Uh, what do you make of that? Um, I think it makes it really tough on the nation. You know, there's this big problem with nations with chronic underfunding and systemic barriers that they're currently trying to navigate. and. You know, we saw the Ontario chiefs have to take the government to court to get a judge to rule on a decision to give them the money that is owed to them for First Nations policing. We have heard about First Nations policing legislation supposed to be coming that hasn't been announced yet fully, so we don't know the full scope of what that's going to look like. So right now, it just seems like nations are really on their own, just trying to put in Band-Aid solutions. And, you know, you do have people with with trauma or have been involved in the justice system going back to their communities and communities have no real way of helping them, especially when there's, again, chronic underfunding for things like addiction and mental health on nations. So it just seems like it's just, you know, there's not a lot of options here. And now it's at the point where, yeah, James Smith does have their own security service. Um, I ha actually have had a chance to see that for myself when I was there the day the prime minister came. and. It just, it's like, where's the help? Where's the support that they obviously need? Mm -hmm. Negan, what do you think the RCMP or even levels of government think about these uh, band members doing their work? Uh, I don't think it really matters what the governments think about the people who, I mean, we saw during the pandemic, I think probably the best example is that when you chronically underfund a community, when you ignore the issues that are most pertinent, when you've got a life and death situation, the communities have to take upon themselves and institute uh, policies, practices, procedures to make sure that that community is safe. And uh, it's actually a better service, perhaps in the long run, and it might be best served if the government's to look at anything to fund these community-based organizations, which are patrolling their community, uh, because they do better work. They do better work than the police officers because they are a proactive force instead of a reactive force. 
Um, and so they are more vested in the interest of the life of the community, and they may be able to expand with funding beyond just patrols to be able to deal with some of the chronic issues of things that Jennifer's talking about, the things of mental health, things of family building and kinship building. All of those things would be really useful for a government to go, hey, this is a great idea. Maybe we should fund it instead of simply thinking it in opposition to us. Jennifer, James Smith Cree Nation, uh, obviously not alone when it comes to drug and alcohol-fueled violence. Uh, there may not be mass killings like this in other places, but there is a lot of trauma affecting communities. What are the solutions? Is this one of them? Um, I think, you know, policing is the end of the road. It's essentially just trying to address the problem once it's already taken place. Um, I think breakdown of family is one of the biggest things. You know, we're we're hearing about Bill C-92, which uh, the firm that I work for, Warshield, we're doing a ton of work on Bill C-92 with Saskatchewan communities right now. You know, building that engagement, talking to the youth, making sure that we're not just fixing broken families, but ensuring that families aren't breaking to begin with. Because, you know, once your kids are removed from, from your care, that's where the breakdown of family starts to happen. But it's not just Bill C-92. We know the government did pass this legislation, giving the autonomy back to nations, but that's just one prong of the approach. We're going to need mental health and addictions funding, and we're going to need to fund it well. And, you know, in Saskatchewan right now, as far as I last recall, um, the funding available for methamphetamine addictions is 30 days. That's not enough. You need 90 days minimum. Um, you know, I had a sibling that went through an addiction and actually passed away in 2018, watched it very closely. We need to be funding all of these different areas. You know, we might not see the solutions working right away, but we will see them down the lines. And I can say that nations in Saskatchewan are taking a good lead on that and are doing everything they can to try to fix it. Jennifer Negan, we'll have to leave it there. Appreciate you both taking the time this week. Great. Me watch. Thanks.